Hi guys, just a quick look at uh, a few radios here, uh, handheld radios, where I live in the UK at the moment, we're having thunderstorms later so uh, I've pretty much unplugged my antennas for the day, so I'm onto the handheld stuff, I live fairly high up so uh, I get quite good reception, so I'm just going to have a quick look at uh, these few different radios and sort of pit them against each other. Um, Okay, so you've got an AOR 8200 Mark III. I think it's about uh, an early 2000s model, maybe. So we're on we're on four we're on four three three zero two five uh, narrow FM. That's the reception there. It's obviously the uh, 70 centimetre band. What's nice about these is the, the screen. The screen's excellent. I mean, it really is for an LCD sort of dot matrix screen. is very, very good, in my opinion. Okay, so we'll compare that once we get a signal back to the... Uh, to the yuppie two Okay, it doesn't seem to be much on there. Uh, okay, we're uh, on the upper tier right now. So I'll just put the lamp on. As you can see in the difference, roughly the same sort of audio. Very, uh, very close. Yeah, that's the other problem, I, think. I would say um, reception is very similar. <laughs> but as you can see, the uh, screen's very, very different. You know. I'd say the uh, AOR sounds slightly more sort of soft, and the upper tier is a little bit harsher, uh, but sharper maybe as well with that. As you can see, the screens on these, uh, the screens are nice on the upper tier. I'll just shut up for a second. Slightly uh, more, I'd say slightly more hiss on the upper tier. I'm probably pronouncing that totally wrong, by the way. Uh, anyway, this is the MVT 7200. It's the upgrade from. It's the upgrade from the uh, 7100. People say the 7100 was the best model. Well, I've had the 7100 and the 9000 Mark II and Mark I, and the best one is, in fact, this, because the 7200 has all the features of the 7100, uh, only you can switch the lamp on, and the keys are actually lit as well. They're just quite dim. Uh, to the, the keys uh, the 7200 are uh, the best in my opinion uh, they're as good easily as good as the 7100 only they retain some sorry they've got extra features such as the lamp you can turn the lamp on uh, some trouble from my, yeah you can turn the lamp on there uh, instead of um, it's having a trouble, trouble focusing on this uh, you can turn the lamp on uh, instead of um, You can turn the lamp on, as I was saying, uh, instead of, you can actually have it solid on like this, instead of having it um, come on briefly, or only when you hold the, the key, in fact. Uh, you can see the AOR there lighting up when the squelch is broken. Uh, 
it's it, it, I mean, you can tell the display difference as well. If you go just to the displays, you know, I mean, that is incredible. The AOR is so much more legible, and to my eyes, it looks it looks even better. You know, I mean, the with the Yupiterio with the screen, I'm having to go right under it to get the best sort of result. I believe that the Yupiteros were designed to be used uh, more like this. That's where they've got quite a good uh, viewing angle there. If you see, that's quite a good. Uh, quite a good angle to view them from um but uh so the this so this to me is the best yuppie they they made uh if not one of the best yuppie tiras you know so and then we've got it against like the aor is it the best aor ever made i'm not sure to be honest i uh i think it is to be honest i think it's certainly up there as one of the um the best aors they ever made handheld uh, because you know the DV10 or 10 I don't think uh, I'm not particularly interested in that I don't think that does very well on HF although it's digital um, but uh, which brings us on to the next one which is going to be uh, the uh, Bearcat the Unidem Bearcat uh, uh, SDS 100E which is a software defined radio it, it's quite interesting actually because this one um, the upper tier is a completely analog system analog pots on top controlling things uh, click stop all analog input everything's analog you know um, it's all everything's analog sort of input on that uh, and then you've got the AOR, which is actually digitized input uh, which is uh, like the squelch for instance it's directly connected to the uh, if you turn it, it doesn't go out and the S there for signal does eventually go out there. Uh, not exactly with where you put in the squelch. It does take a couple of seconds or millisecond lag. Uh, so that's, it's sort of digitized, computer controlled, heavily computer controlled, but still it's an analog system. All the filters and that are analog uh, filters. Um, you've got the uh, uh, three kilohertz filter in this for the SSB and this has got I think it's um, a 2.4, uh, which is a really good filter they use actually in the AOR 8600, a very similar SSB filter. Oh, that's another difference. This has got a narrow AM and a better filter on sideband than the MVT 7100. Okay, so um, yeah, this is, like I was saying, this is uh, a digitized version, uh, computer controlled, but still an analog system. Like this is an analog system, but this is totally analog. This is digitized and computer controlled in places. Also has a band scope and stuff like that. And then, of course, as people probably will know if you're watching this and interested in radios, that the SDS100 is, uh, is absolutely a uh, software-defined system. That's what the SDS stands for, I believe. So uh, I say we've got all the aerials of the same there. All the aerials are exactly the same antenna there which is like um, the original for the 7100 antenna. There's a little adapter in the top of the unit that comes with it, which is useful. And the point of this is, if you, if I'm listening now, if I get the squelch there, you know, it, first of all, it's very scratchy, very scratchy sound on the uni then. Uh, and secondly, it, it doesn't even pick up this. It's on exactly the same frequency. You know, and it doesn't. It, it can't even receive this. It's they're not. They're not made for this. This sort of thing. You see, they're not. You, know, you can nearly. You know, you can. You can nearly hear the signal. That that's sort of how bad it is, and it? it doesn't really matter what antenna you put on it. It's obviously not tuned. These unions aren't tuned, as you can see. The screen is actually quite nice there. Color LCD LED screen, uh, not LED LCD screen. Probably LED backlit. Anyway, I was going off on a tangent there. Um, so like I was saying, the the union you can't even hear any radio on it you know there's no you can't even hear sorry any any reception of this channel on it and these two these two are doing fantastic jobs you know they, they really are they're really doing fantastic jobs of it and sort of this you can't even pick it up but this really is made for um really really made for and focused on digital and it really does that very well you know it really does a really good job of scanning and uh, digital reception I mean, really, it's, you know, it is great. I'll just knock it on scan there for a second. 
Um, I'll just put that to one side while it loads, and I'll bring out the sort of number four, which is the uh, the uh, UVR. Is it UVR? UV dash five. I've brought out the uh, Bofeng UV dash five R here uh, on the same frequency again. So we should we should pick something up. It was. I don't think. I think that actually they've. Um, as soon as I've started to sort of, uh, you know, as soon as I've started to uh, do the video, everyone's disappeared off that channel. Excellent. Of course they have. But uh, this here, this actually receives as good as these two because it's very tuned, and so is the antenna, uh, very tuned for the the bands. It's very tuned for the 70 centimetres and the... Um, uh, oh, the back. There you go. It's very tuned for the bands it's set to there, which is 70 centimetres and 2 metres. Very tuned indeed. Uh, the antenna, the whole system. It just seems to get a little bit more interference than the other two. You know, it just seems to get a bit more interference than the other two. Otherwise, it's, it's you know, it's a stronger signal, but it really is tuned for it, like I said. You know, you can't, if you only had one radio to use, then this would make a nice little scanner, I suppose. Let's just knock that off. Okay, so that's a quick comparison with these radios. Um, and now, like I was saying, the, the Uniden now is scanning on digital, which it's really what it's sort of made for, you know. It, it seems to have more sensitivity across uh, and very tuned for these, these sort of things and not so much tuned for um, sort of the old school um, amateur bands. It seems to be more, much more tuned for like uh, services. And things like that, and depending on the antenna, obviously, but it does seem to be very sensitive for the service sort of bands, like this this band, for instance. So trying to do something there, you know. Okay, that's it. Then let's just a quick look at these three, three or four different radios, and just comparing the audio. This one didn't pick it up at all. These two picked it up. I'd say roughly the same, but probably a bit softer, warmer sound on the AOR, and a bit of a scratchier sound, but slightly clearer maybe on the upper tier. Uh, and the Bofeng was performing reception-wise around the same, but with a bit more interference in the signal, seemed to be. But that's probably due, due to the antenna uh, being very tuned for those bands. And like I said, Uniden really is a great radio, but more very sort of digital-focused. Right, okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.